Hi and welcome back to a new video. You might remember this PC which we built three and a half years ago. The base is an AMD Threadripper 3960X. This is our current video editing rig. And this one for whatever reason has massive temperature issues. It was a coincidence in the German take that when I was just doing the intro, the system powered off. And that's exactly the problem and we will try to figure out what the hell is wrong with this system and if we can fix it, but we will just probably build an entirely new system. This video is powered by Seasonic with their MacFlow fans. These non-RGB fans combine both a low noise level and at the same time high airflow. In addition, they come with the perfect daisy chaining cable management system. Depending on your requirements, you can connect a different amount of fans directly with each other. For example, two or three fans for water cooling on a radiator. The fans are held together with a magnetic system which is extremely strong and also electrically connects the fans. With additional adapters, you can extend this even further. So for example two fans on top of your PC for the AIO and a third fan as case exhaust fan. Find out more about Seasonic's MacFlow fans in the description below. Just a quick recap. The base of this system is an ASUS Prime TRX 40 motherboard with an AMD Threadripper 3960X 24 core processor. We also have as far as I remember an RTX 2080 Ti that we had to modify a little bit with this cooler and that's also in an interesting state. We will also cover that. But what is happening? So right now, as you can see, the system is just idling in BIOS. Nothing is happening and the CPU is just slowly increasing in temperature. During the intro, we had like 83 degrees Celsius after powering on the system and now it's like already 96, 97. This will keep increasing until it hits 100 degrees Celsius and then the system will just shut off. Usually, even if there is an issue, the system should just lower or the CPU should lower clock and voltage so it doesn't shut down, which doesn't seem to work here anymore. Yeah, 102 degrees Celsius and shut down. Now the system is so hot that I cannot even boot it again because it's so warm. I just have to wait a little bit until it cools down a few degrees Celsius. The most logical conclusion would probably be that there's some issue with the AIO, like pump is dead or the radiator might be blocked. There is maybe too much cat hair inside the radiator surface blocking the airflow. All of this is something I obviously checked directly and it turned out to be not that easy or at least I just didn't find the issue within a few minutes. And I want to show you something with the thermal imaging camera. System is back alive, we see CPU over temperature error. It's also interesting if we inspect the dust filter that's sitting on top of the PC. Can you see all this? The deformation in this mesh? I'm not sure what material it is, probably plastic the way you can deform it, but yeah, with all the heat being pushed by the AIO through this, it just deformed over time heavily, heavily. Looking through the thermal imaging camera, we can see the area around the socket is very hot. We see about 70 degrees Celsius on the socket and also on one of the tubings. That is why I had an assumption that the pump is maybe not dead. Because you can see one of the tubings, this one, is really warm. This is like 60 or 70 degrees Celsius. And then it goes up to the radiator and the other side is pretty cold. Which, at least to me, logically must seem like there is hot water running through and then the cold water coming down back into the AIO. At least that would be my logical assumption. Otherwise I think also the other tube right here would be warm and not cold like we can see it. So that all of that is pretty odd. The entire thing just became worse and worse over the previous year. It started that the top area became extremely hot. So just in Windows idle, I think it reaches about 60 or 70 degrees Celsius. You cannot even really touch the surface. That's probably also why this one looks like that. And that was the point when I started wondering what the hell is going on because, you know, if it wasn't hot here, then maybe thermal paste failed or the pump failed or whatever. But since there is so much hot air coming out of the top, yeah, it's uh, pretty strange. Might be something with the CPU or the motherboard, but I'm not sure. I just wanted to go to Windows, but I can't because it's already overheating during yeah, just booting into Windows. So I will give it maybe like 15 minutes to cool down and then we will see if we can make it into Windows to take a look at like hardware info. Finally found a good purpose for my Noctua Home fan. Cool down the PC a little bit so we can eventually make it into Windows. 
I'm not sure. I just can't get back into Windows. It always keeps crashing during boot because it's just getting way too warm. And I think we'll just start investigating. So I will remove the pump and we will see if there's anything maybe strange looking underneath. Yeah, I mean, paste was definitely still there. A little bit dry, but shouldn't cause that kind of problem. I applied a new paste, will put back the pump header. I don't think that this was the problem, but after like three and a half years, that will definitely improve it maybe by like, I don't know, five degrees Celsius. So that might be enough to get into Windows. Fresh paste is applied. We'll try again. Oh, we made it. You see, it only helped so much. It's again, I mean, it's Windows idle. Only CPU-Z and hardware info open. 90 degrees Celsius, oh, 100. That was, that was on the edge, I think. Windows idle 120 watt, what the actual. And it's only CPU-Z and hardware info that's open. Even an IQ pump is running at like 3000 RPM, so that looks also okay. It's the high pump speed. I cannot even put it higher, so that doesn't seem to help as well. In result of the situation, we had to disable 16 out of the 24 cores of these PCs in the previous months to be even able to just do anything in Windows to like draw some data, or whatever. But there's something, something is extremely odd. Especially if you check the idle power consumption with the 3960X, of course, it has a higher idle power consumption, but not 120 watt without doing anything. It should be much lower than that. I also tried different BIOS versions and it didn't fix anything. So all of this seems quite weird, especially considering that the CPU had like a peak power draw, I think of like 280 and in idle doing like 120 seems just strange for whatever reason. So I'm not sure what exactly is causing the problem, but I think we'll just try again to see if the AIO was maybe part of the problem. I will remove it and then we will probably just remove the cold plate, see if there is any issue. What surprised me in this system is the GPU because back then we didn't have a different kind of cooling solution for this 2080 Ti, I think. And that's why we placed this kind of strange AIO solution on the graphics card. And there's also a fan on the right side that blows air onto VRM and also the memories. But if we inspect the uh, PCB, you might be able to see that there's some bend in the PCB now, but it's still working. So that's also something I want to inspect further. The radiator also looks fine when it comes to dust and cat hair, which surprised me to be honest. I think over the duration, I maybe cleaned it once or twice, but I expected much more dust and cat hair inside. So yeah, that was already better than expected. Well, there's still liquid inside. <laughs> yeah, so after three and a half to four years, that's, I would say, kind of expected aging. Nothing unusual, at least on the bottom of the pump, on the gasket. There are some spots here and there. You can see some tiny bits but it's not like it was completely blocked. That's kind of expected after this time range, I would say, but definitely not blocking off the AIO completely. So yeah, I would stand by my first impression that the AIO was not part of the problem. Even the graphic cat did better than expected. There is some dust and cat hair in between here, but yeah, for the age, I think that's kind of okay. This also turned out to be better than I initially expected. I was a bit skeptical with only the fan pushing air on here without actively cooling that area over there. But as you can see, it survived three and a half years. At least this was not part of the problem. I'm continuing to disassemble the PC, just wanted to get the SSDs out and then, yeah, I realized three and a half years ago, I might have missed to peel off this one of the top SSD, which still worked for the time frame, but yeah. Small fail from my side, which I think didn't cause the entire cooling drama about the PC. From all the testing I did so far, it just seems that cooling was not the problem. And at that stage, it's either probably the CPU or the motherboard because everything else I tested as far as I can and doesn't seem to fix the problem. So I could maybe just buy another 30 per CPU or a different motherboard for the socket. But at that point, both of these are pretty expensive parts and it's also not even necessary anymore. So these days you don't need such a high core count CPU. Even the normal Ryzen is fine. That's why we'll just change to a different system with much lower core count, but at the same time, much stronger GPU changing to a 4070 Ti 
I think 4070 Ti Super, and that should be sufficient for the next, probably again, three to four years. For the new video editing rig, we will stay with AMD, however, move away from the Threadripper, go over to AM5 and also a smaller CPU, a 7700X. I still have laying around from different testing and I will make good use in the new video editing rig. It's simply not necessary, so you might say, okay, at this time, might just wait another month and go for Ryzen 9000, but it just wouldn't make a real difference for us. It's not needed, so I just can use one of the stuff or some stuff I have still laying around. The motherboard is a ProArt X670E Creator Wi-Fi, which I think is one of the coolest motherboards for the socket, price performance wise, when you check what's included, like the native 10G network connection. Already put back the SSDs, Windows is still on them. I will first try if I can reuse it because I'm lazy. Worst case, I can just install it again if needed. And I put them in the slots that are connected to the chipset, left this one empty, so I can always easily access this one if I need to for further expansion. This one I left empty because it's sharing lanes with the bottom slot. All of this will be put inside an NZXT H7 flow, simply because Cora wanted to stay with a white case, but we also wanted to move over to more airflow because the previous system had a closed front, which was definitely not that great for the GPU cooling. So this should be much better with the mesh in front. For the PCU, I have also NZXT C1200. Saw this one at Computex and thought it would be like a perfect match for the case. Not sure what to think of this, to be fully honest. Like, all of the connectors are fully plugged, but can you see the gap? <laughs> this is uh, it's pretty loose. Pretty loose for be being fully plugged. So I will make sure it's like fully inserted, but it's definitely something to pay attention for. It seems to be a, a bit too loose. Not sure yet what to think of the white cables and black motherboard combination. I mean, we wanted to have like a white PC, but then again, I mean, the function in the end is more important. So still went for the creator motherboard and we will see how it looks in the end. Also got this uh, vertical GPU mounting kit that I think officially is not compatible to this case. Not sure, but we will try if it fits anyway. Doesn't perfectly fit. There is still a gap in here because already reached the end like this. I cannot push it any further in, but I think just a little bit longer screws and should be okay. Just grabbed two of the UNC 6x32 something screws that we include with the CPU contact frames from Grizzly. They are a bit longer than usual and that should work. What's not that convenient is, as you can see, I can't really access the screw because of this part being so thick. Yeah, yeah, that seems to be working. There's just the downside that the foot that's usually on here doesn't sit on anything of the case. Should be fine. This seems to be sturdy enough, but this should be better anyway than having a heavy card hanging horizontal. The case usually comes with those three fans included. We will throw them away and replace them with the new ones that are basically three fans in one. I have three of them, so we can put it on the bottom, in front and also in top for the AIO. That's also quite difficult to access with the thing in front. Man, I just hate pre-installed fans. In any case, not a fan of this, literally. So far, I'm very satisfied with how the system looks like. Now going to mount the AIO in there for this. I just wanted to mount a cryo sheet and there's one thing I wanted to highlight about it because we got a lot of feedback over the past, I would say half year, by a ton of customers who used it and one of the points people were not that happy about is how to apply it, how to align it. So if you apply it on, let's say, a CPU, on a CPU it's not that much of a problem, more on GPUs, it's easy to, yeah, to move it while mounting the cooler. That's why we came up with this, what we call the cryo sheet applicator oil. And you just cut open this thing in front. and apply a drop in the middle, in the center. Essentially, the cryo sheet is nothing else than a lot of graphene powder baked together with silicone. And what we have here is silicone oil, the same that we use in thermal paste. And we tested this, and it's also interesting. So initially, if you do it with the oil, the temperature is better than without, but that's just initially, like for the first hours, days, and after like a week or two, the temperature will be the same as without the oil. It doesn't impact the aging. As I said, there's already silicone inside the pad anyway. 
And with this, it will just make it much easier because it won't move around. And for the future, this is nothing you can buy separately, but for the future, we will include it in the cryo sheet. So what you currently probably find in stock doesn't have it included yet, but for the future, it will be included. I already wanted to talk about it, that we were listening to the feedback about this case. And with this in place, even in the normal orientation, now the CPU is back lifted up. You can see it doesn't fall down, so it makes mounting in some instances, especially on GPU, a lot more convenient. I think even with the black motherboard, it still looks all right. Only the GPU is missing, you still have to do a little bit of cable management in the back, but then we're ready to go. With that blue and red on the card, not that happy. It looked much better without the graphics card, now that this is in there, it's not as cool as I expected. If the card was just all black, I think it would be fine, but now I think I have to look for a white card to make this look better. For now, it just has to work because we need it for the video editing, but I will probably check if I can find a white card. Maybe with the 50th gen, we will see. I hope that ASUS doesn't continue with this uh, blue and red thing. That's uh, not that cool, I think. Seems like we didn't break it. <laughs> Seems like running. The error message is also luckily not a CPU over temperature error. And I'm also happy with those uh, triple fans from NZXT, it looks pretty awesome. I'm still not a fan of the RDX 47 TTI Super in this design. It doesn't really fit into the case, but yeah, we can still change it later. Also still have to install all the software like Rotate, AIO, LCD and all that, but at least it seems to be working for now. That looks a lot better. Just installing the graphics card driver, you see about like 45 degrees Celsius. That's definitely in the expected range. So not sure what it was with the thread driver setup, but this looks much better. Now I just have to install all the new drivers. Just doing the last steps with the NZX Team Cam and all that. You probably won't be able to judge that, but I can tell you the translation for liquid here, at least in German, it doesn't make any kind of sense. In German, it would make more sense to have like the water temperature or like coolant temperature, but liquid here, the translation isn't good. Just change back to English makes much more sense. I completed testing, also ran 3D mic to check performance, also temperatures, everything is in line and as expected, the system is much colder, much less power draw, much more quiet than before and even has more performance, which is really good. If you have any idea what was going on with the AMD Threadripper system, please let me know because even up to now, even with the testing, I wasn't really able to figure out why the AMD Threadripper CPU was overheating to this regard shouldn't have happened, especially, I know it was only a 240 AIO, but a 240 AIO can easily dissipate like 90 to 100 watts the CPU was, for whatever reason, drawing in idle. All right, if you see this video, this video was already cut and processed on the system. I hope you enjoyed this video, see you next time, bye bye.